The oarfish, a rare creature of the deep water that is frequently referred to as the harbinger of death or the doomsday fish, has resurfaced, igniting a variety of beliefs and worries. The oarfish has long been associated with myths of impending doom and cataclysmic catastrophes in Japanese culture, which has perpetuated these myths for millennia. The sea serpent is also known by the moniker the messenger from the sea guard's palace. The oarfish is the world's longest bony fish and was first discovered in 1772. Being able to reach lengths of more than 30 feet and weigh up to 600 pounds, it is one of the longest fish species in the world. The elongated fish, albeit not a reptile, has been believed to be the source of myths about sea serpents that may be found all across the world. In Palau, it is known as the rooster fish because of the spiky red fins that protrude from its head, while other people have referred to it as the king of the herring because of its silvery sheen. For a species about which so little is known, it goes by an ironic abundance of names. Yet relatively little study has been done on oarfish since they often inhabit depths that humans still find difficult to reach. Specimens are rare and hard to come by because, in addition to being unwanted by catch, oarfish are also typically thrown back by fishermen since their flabby, gooey meat cannot be sold at market. Likewise, the information gained by collecting specimens is typically not very substantial because studying dead animals in their natural habitat provides more information than those collecting specimens. Humans rarely see it because it prefers depths between 656 and 3200 feet, which hides its slim, ribbon-like body and shimmering silver scales. Scuba divers in Taiwan, on the other hand, have recently reported seeing oarfish. Why? According to legend, the oarfish only comes to the surface when an immense number of people are in imminent danger. It is thought that the oarfish appears as a warning sign, indicating that a tsunami or earthquake is about to strike. And there's a good reason why people today still hold on to this ancient belief. At least a dozen oarfish were said to have washed ashore in Japan in 2010. A catastrophic tsunami was simultaneously caused by a powerful earthquake that struck Japan's Fukushima shortly after, in March 2011. Six oarfish were seen a few days before a devastating earthquake that struck the southern Philippines in 2017. In the early months of 2019, just a few years after that and months before the Yamagata earthquake and blackout, at least three oarfish were discovered washed ashore on Japan's coastlines. It remains to be seen whether recent reports of oarfish will result in a deadly natural calamity. But for a variety of reasons, scientists argue that this old superstition is untrue. Even while scientists don't currently utilize fish behavior to anticipate tremors, the Japan Times reports that there may be some scientific merit to that claim. Deep-sea fish residing close to the seafloor are more sensitive to the movements of active faults than fish living near the surface of the water, according to Kiyoshi Waditsumi, a scientist who studies earthquakes at the non-profit group Episco. However, according to Louisiana State University oceanographer and ecologist Mark Benfield, whatever the oceanographic phenomena are that push these animals on shore, they are probably on a large enough scale to affect more than one or fish. Mark Benfield was quoted in National Geographic as saying, In other words, if the tale were true other animals would have been seen before earthquakes in addition to oarfish. And if that were the case, there would probably be a lot more fish that washed up each time. There is no scientific proof of a connection, so I don't think people need to be concerned. Hiroyuki Motomura, a professor of ichthyology at Kagoshima University, said in an interview with the New York Post, I think the reason these fish are frequently found dead when they are found is because they have a tendency to climb to the surface when their physical state is poor. Furthermore, a 2018 study that was published in the Bulletin Southern California Academy of Sciences revealed a link between oarfish strandings and El Nino years. In years when there is an El Nino, the surface waters are warmer than usual but the deeper waters are colder. The oarfish is guided by its prey which moves in step with the rising water temperatures. 
using submersibles to maybe record video of more natural behaviors is one of the best methods to learn more about oarfish, according to Heidelberg. ROVs can help in this situation. In rare and exciting instances, these remotely operated vehicles have managed to get a glimpse of oarfish in the deep sea. One such instance is the 2011 video Benfield captured in the Gulf of Mexico, which demonstrates how oarfish truly position themselves vertically, like long knives in the water. Because they are facing up, they will silhouette their meal against the downwelling light and reduce their cross-section to any predators who may be on the lookout for them, Benfield believes that their upward position may represent a feeding technique. There are only around 12 ROVs that can withstand the pressure and darkness of the mesopelagic zone that are available in the North American academic community. Researchers can use the hundreds strong fleet of high-tech ROVs owned by the oil and gas sector as part of the Serpent Project, a global endeavor whose Gulf of Mexico branches led by Benfield. This allows researchers to learn more about the Twilight Zone and its inhabitants. Or fish, according to Benfield, don't seem to be that uncommon. I just don't think we spend that much effort trying to find them. There are not enough eyes on the sea. Surprisingly, biomechanists are also interested to learn more about the oarfish and its neighbors. The oarfish moves in a way that has the potential to be used as a propulsion source for robotic vehicles, almost like a linear propeller, according to Benfield. It does this by wriggling its red dorsal fins, which span a sizable portion of its entire body. Oarfish are not particularly harmful to people, despite the fact that many historical stories about sea serpents and sea monsters were probably inspired by them. Orfish's digestive system only has a small opening, and they eat tiny plankton as their main food source. Their gill rakers, which are flimsier structures, are used to catch tiny organisms instead of true teeth, which they don't even have. Orfish lack scales, unlike many other bony fish. They have a silvery coat of a substance called guanine and tubercules instead. Although they have evolved to exist at extreme pressure, their skin is delicate and prone to harm on the outside. The oarfish was seen as a symbol of rebirth and hope in several civilizations, where it was also connected to rainbows. Many Native American tribes still regard the oarfish as a powerful totem today. The oarfish continues to play a significant role in many tribal traditions and belief systems, despite the fact that its meaning may have altered over time. We're crossing our fingers that experts are right and that recent reports of the legendary Dooms Dayfish are simply old myths reappearing. Time will tell if this myth is true or not. With that being said, what do you think of the oarfish as the harbinger of death? Share your thoughts in the comment box below. Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.